So, in the previous lecture, we had talked about multi-purpose river valley development projects and development schemes, where we had discussed the uh, you know political and historical settings or context that led to the emergence of uh, those uh, projects during that particular period of time. That is the immediate post-independence era or the immediate post-independence period. Now, uh, now I would be uh, focusing on one particular case study, which is the Faraka uh, Barrage project. Uh, and uh, the Faraka Barrage project mainly for Eastern India, more specifically uh, West Bengal. And I will explain that why I am focusing on uh, Faraka Barrage project. And uh, this particular lecture or this particular case study, I have divided it into two parts. So, in this first uh, presentation on the case study, I would be focusing on the historical and technical components of the Barrage project, uh, followed by a discussion on the social and em environmental repercussions or social and environmental implications of the uh, Faraka barrage project uh, mainly for the inhabitants of uh, uh, the West Bengal more specifically you know the inhabitants uh, um, of the upstream and downstream of the Faraka barrage the Malda and the Murshidabad district and we will get to know that why you know discussing socio environmental implications and repercussions are so very important you know for hydrologists because uh, it is the uh, particular dam project it not only consists of uh, technical components, but one has to keep in mind that of course, it has numerous social and cultural dimension, uh, dimension that really needs to be uh, accounted for. So, uh, we will discuss that in the next lecture, but here I would be mainly focusing on the technical components of the Faraka barrage, where we will get to know uh, data relating to like when was it you know, uh, when was it constructed, uh, we would get to know the um, details about the uh, pre-implementation and the implementation phase. So, it would be mainly restricted to the pre-implementation and implementation phase and also little bit on the post-implementation phase, but then uh, restricted only to, uh, 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 the, to the technical part of it and the social part we will discuss in our uh, next presentation. Now, to begin with that out of so many other uh, barrages, out of so many other dams, because we had discussed in our previous presentation that you know in the uh, immediate post independence period and following that for the next uh, 2, 3 decades, uh, India saw, India visualized the construction of numerous uh, big public infrastructures on uh, rivers and water bodies. But then out of uh, all these very important you know massive uh, uh, big infrastructures and dams, why did I choose uh, Faraka? So, first I would uh, like to explain that why I am uh, focusing on the Faraka barrage project. There are a few reasons behind this. So, the first reason being transboundary dimension. So, it is a very important uh, project uh, in the sense that it also involves and it includes transboundary dimension. So, which means that uh, I mean there is a geopolitical aspect and there is a geopolitical perspective uh, relating to this project because uh, uh, Faraka has really been a bone of contention uh, since decades since the implementation of the project between Bangladesh and its downstream country uh, between India and its downstream country Bangladesh. So, uh, we really need to uh, also explore the transboundary uh, water uh, issues, the you know um, interstate uh, water issues. So, uh, Ganges is a particular river which is shared by uh, different countries, uh, in, you know, uh, including uh, Nepal, including India, including uh, Bangladesh. So, what, what, how you know this kind of uh, projects? Uh, what are the impacts or implications of these kind of projects on the geopolitical relation between uh, or across nations? So, this is an important dimension which needs to be taken into consideration when we are talking about water society and sustainability. So, this is one reason why I deliberately you know selected the Faraka barrage because we will see that uh, it has both intrastate and interstate dimensions. So, uh, in order to have a more detailed discussion on that uh, uh, I you know selected Faraka as one of the case studies. So, this is one. Second is that you know uh, explorations uh, from the Bangladesh perspective uh, um, are there. So, there have been uh, there is a massive literature that uh, focuses on the impact of the Faraka barrage on 
Bangladesh, on the people of the Bangladesh, on the topography of the Bangladesh, uh, uh, of the country, of uh, uh, this particular nation which is located at the downstream, you know, um, uh, at the downstream and that is why uh, the situation and the scenario is more complex. So, um, so we find literature from a social scientists, we also find uh, literature or technical details uh, coming from natural scientists where uh, to a great extent uh, they had actually ridiculed uh, this particular barrage project because um, literature uh, attests that Faraka has really been hazardous and dangerous uh, for Bangladesh because it had really increased both floods and droughts uh, in, the, uh, in the country. So, um, so we have uh, lots of works or uh, numerous literature from the Bangladeshi perspective, but so far as the Indian perspective or most specifically the West Bengal scenario is concerned, we have very less data. And it is quite a pity that it is very difficult also to uh, get data to collect and extract data because uh, you know um, we will see that there is an element of archival silence uh, so far as uh, you know data is concerned uh, uh, you know uh, regarding this particular aspect. And uh, whatever data we have uh, that data is to a great extent linear because it uh, provides a lot of information about the technical details, but at the same time it uh, does not talk much about you know the condition of the people uh, across both uh, upstream and downstream uh, of the barrage. So, this is one reason why uh, I would emphasize that now we really need to explore like what had been the experiences, exchanges and encounters uh, of people who had faced the implications of the Faraka barrage for the, for the last few decades. So, we really need to explore this underexplored area. That is why I thought it wise to you know take Faraka Barrage uh, project because this will give uh, us the opportunity to explore uh, you know uh, from the Indian side, from the West Bengal side, not only the Bangladesh perspective but also the perspectives from West Bengal. Then the next reason is uh, I'd say that the lower Gangetic Basin it is a nebulous fluid and hybrid space. This is also very very important because uh, if you see that the uh, if you see the location of the Faraka barrage uh, project, uh, so it's in Faraka in the Murshidabad district, and this is a part or uh, this is an integrated part of the larger scape of the lower Gangetic basin, uh, and this lower Gangetic basin it is crisscrossed by numerous canals, rivers, rivulets, so it's a kind of a waterscape. But, uh, but at the same time it is also as it is the uh, lower Gangetic Basin, so as it is the estuarine deltaic uh, region, so, uh, so where uh, the river actually or the rivers meet, meet the sea. So, this area itself is very complex in the sense that you know, uh, there is very interesting literature on this. For example, uh, people geographers like Kuntala Lahiridad, they had uh, showed that this space you can neither designate it it as land nor you can designate it as water. So, it is a very complex scape uh, with you know uh, I mean uh, complex scape which is uh, which which uh, manifests uh, uh, elements of hybridity. So, it is a land water scape. So, in scapes like this in tropical estuarine deltaic space like this uh, we need really need to critically discuss whether the construction or implementation of big infrastructure is really fruitful or not. So, uh, we need to focus on the uh, impact of the Faraka Barrage project from this perspective as well that is already it is a nebulous place that already it is a fluid space. So, is it wise to really come up with a big construction like the Faraka Barrage project on a complex space like this which is a land waterscape and where the environment where the fluvial geomorphology is extremely dynamic and it is always in a flask. So, this is another reason why I wanted to focus on uh, Faraka to have a more critical perspective on uh, you know uh, the construction of barrage in these kind of spaces which are fluid and nebulous and hybrid. And finally, like this is a personal reason. So, on a personal note, uh, so I had uh, got the opportunity, I uh, got chances to visit, uh, you know, uh, people to visit villages um, 
uh, which are located in upstream and downstream of the ba Faraka barrage project uh, because uh, this grew out of uh, not my interest you know uh, mapping the implications of Faraka on the people, but rather it grew out of a, of a different encounter. So, we were asked to uh, document ecosystem services in some of the villages which are the riverine villages. So, I will explain that uh, in the, this uh, particular slide uh, in this particular presentation and also in the next uh, presentation in more detail. So, I had the chance to do some field surveys to collect some empirical data. Uh, you know and to get exposed to empirical findings in these places. So, I could talk directly to the people. So, as I had already mentioned that you know this uh, uh, I mean we have uh, less data. So, there is a kind of a lack of data there is archival silence so far as construction of uh, Faraka and its uh, impact are concerned. So, I had the chance to meet people, I had the chance to get to know and get to learn from people's perception that how do they feel. We are not only interested about how the bureaucrats feel, we are not only interested about how the technical uh, persons feel, you know those perspectives are extremely important, but at the same time it is also important to know how the people you know feel, how they perceive because after all I mean it is the people who are having lived encounters in the spaces which to a great extent had been altered due to the implementation of massive uh, projects like Faraka for example. Yeah. So, this is the Gangetic Basin and uh, this is the uh, this is the Faraka, the, this is the location and uh, so, I will explain. So, this is the Bhagiriti Hugli river and this is the Padma. So, the Padma uh, flowing to the Bay of Bengal and getting in touch with the Meghna and finally, you know falling into the sea the Bay of Bengal and the Bhagiriti Hugli river uh, coming down from I mean below the Raj Mahal hills uh, and then passing different districts also passing Kolkata and then the Sundarbans. Uh, and then finally, you know, falling into the, the Bay of Bengal. So, and uh, the barak, the barrage was constructed exactly uh, at this location called Farakka in the Murshidabad district. Yeah, and this is a massive project. So, though it is called a barrage, but it is, uh, I mean, it's not less than a dam because uh, there are like uh, 112 log gates. So, it is really massive and, uh, and there are numerous other uh, components of this particular barrage which uh, we will discuss. And what I would like to argue or say is that uh, I mean the uh, technical details of this particular barrage project is not only fascinating, but it is also richly and thickly loaded with history more importantly environmental history of the lower Gangetic Basin, which I would very much like to explore and share here. And hence, I have kept the title as you know Faraka Barrage, not only the technical details, but Faraka Barrage both historical and technical details. So, what I want to emphasize here is that you know when we are uh, exploring or when we are studying a particular dam or when we are studying a particular barrage or for that matter any other big projects, okay, water projects or whatever, it is very important for us not only to focus on the technical details, but also to focus on the political and historical context, because that would provide lot of interesting insights, uh, uh, which will make us aware you know about the subtleties and nitty gritties of the project, which each and every uh, person associated with this project, uh, which each and every person you know uh, trying to uh, be become knowledgeable about the project should get to learn. So, yes, these are uh, in some important uh, details about the project. So, the Faraka Barrage uh, Project Authority, uh, I mean it was formed in the 1961 and then uh, the project uh, was laid out in 1962. And uh, so, uh, as I mentioned it is a massive project. So, the entire uh, barrage uh, project complex, it actually comprises of these uh, four key elements, one is the of course, the Faraka barrage which is 2.46 uh, uh, kilometers long roughly uh, followed by this you know this, so this is the barrage 
and this is the feeder canal, the long feeder canal, the long 38.3 kilometers uh, feeder canal, uh, which was mainly uh, uh, which was mainly designed and constructed to uh, carry uh, the water. Uh, from the from so 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 to carry the induced water from the Ganges uh, to the Bhagirathi to increase the flow of the Bhagirathi Hugli River, and uh, the Jangipur barrage. So it is located here, and also you know other important components like uh, navigation locks and associated structures. So, this is in brief the major uh, elements or the major components uh, of the project and uh, this feeder canal. So, so, so the it was commenced in 1961 and the project was laid out in 1962 and by 1971 it was complete. But then uh, the date of comments, uh, I mean the, the, it was finally it was inaugurated on 21st May 1975. So, there is a gap between 1971 and 1975, a gap of 4 years between 71 and 75. So, the feeder canal was constructed within this gap of the 4 years. So, within the gap of this 4 years is very important uh, feeder canal, it was constructed and uh, as we can see it is a long um, uh, stretch uh, uh, and uh, it was mainly constructed uh, uh, to draw water for induced water supply from the Ganges to the Bhagirathi Hugli river in order to improve the river regime and navigability of the uh, Bhagirathi Hugli river um, uh, to uh, revive the to revive and restore the health of the Calcutta port. Now, this is a crucial point which again I will elaborate. And uh, what is important is that uh, the feeder canal was constructed out of the purpose of you know uh, I mean uh, the whole purpose was to reduce uh, siltation and salinity. And so, uh, it was thought that it would be able to uh, flush uh, out the you know sedimentation or flush the uh, siltation uh, from the estuary and uh, b I mean uh, to a great extent it would also play an important role in the reduction of floods in the catchment area and it would also improve the drainage capacity of the uh, Bhagirathi and the upper Hooghly uh, stretch. So, these are the major reasons why this very long feeder canal was constructed uh, between 1971 and uh, 1975 and finally, the Faraka Barrage project was inaugurated in 1975. Now, these are some of the technical details of the project again, number of uh, bays, pond level, length, head regulator, details about the head regulator, feeder canal 38.3 kilometers. Uh, so, all the details about some of the major components of the barrage project and we have to keep this in mind that uh, in the official report it was mentioned that this uh, 2.46 kilometer uh, Faraka barrage along with 3.8 kilometer feeder canal it was supposed to uh, divert uh, 40,000 kuzaks of uh, the Ganges water to the Bhagirathi Hooghly distributary. Now, now I am uh, interested to share with you, you know, uh, environmental history of this region. So, why we really need insights from environmental history to understand Faraka Barrage. Now, actually uh, it is very important for us to know that why at that particular location the Faraka Barrage was constructed during that particular period of time. So, now uh, we have to keep in mind that though the project was commenced in 1961, 60s and though the project uh, finally, it was inaugurated in the 70s, mid 70s, yet the I mean discussions and opinions that a barrage should be constructed somewhere near Farakka or somewhere below the Rajmail hills, this idea was already generated even 100 years before the construction of the barrage. So, there is a long history and there is a historical context that provides interesting insights about the pre-implementation phase. Now, if we uh, get insights from environmental history, then we will find out that, uh, that you know uh, the 17th and 18th centuries 
these were periods of massive change massive change uh, for the you know to riverine topography of the area and if we go through history books most interestingly a uh, book written by radha komal mukherjee which is called the changing face of bengal there he writes that how uh, the distributaries they their flows uh, and the patterns were actually changing during this particular period of time and this is attested and this is validated by the different cartographic evidences that we have from the 15th 16th centuries to the 17th 18th centuries uh, for example we have brilliant cartographers so cartography means map making and cartographic evidences uh, by cartographic evidences i mean the maps so which are very rich uh, historical sources for example so now if we uh, um, compare two very interesting maps one by the portuguese uh, um, cartographer called uh, matthews van den broch and the other by the uh, cartographer british cartographer james rennell so james rennell is uh, more popular he is more renowned uh, and he has thoroughly surveyed lengths and breadths of um, eastern india specifically bengal the bengal province and if we compare these two maps we find that already by the 17th century the bhagirathi had been reduced the flow of the river it had significantly reduced and uh, you know uh, uh, the connection with the ganges had also been disrupted and rennell's map shows that the the river um, could only function during the monsoons during rains and so the uh, among the active distributors of the ganges uh, were the uh, chadna and jalangi and also the padma so in brief if i say that uh, you know previously padma was not a very significant stream of the ganges and the flow of water in the padma was much less compared to the flow of river in the bhagirathi hugli but since the 17th 18th centuries what happened is that there was a decline in the flow of the bhagirathi uh, hugli river and on the other hand padma became a very significant stream so that if affected the entire riverine topography and that uh, to a great extent uh, you know uh, determine the history and geography of bengal so what happened is that as there was a sort of eastward migration uh, i mean in the flow of the river so eastern bengal it was becoming prosperous and on the other hand western bengal it started becoming decadent so and mainly districts like badwan districts like hugli you know uh, the prosperity of these uh, districts it started declining due to the change in the courses of river but what was most important or what was most crucial was that the, these particular change was affecting the health of the calcutta port yes so this was the vital issue that the kolkata port it was uh, you know failing to accommodate big vessels and of course this was very important you know calcutta port was very important for or rather it was a lifeline for the british you know it played a very important role uh, relating to trade and transportation and revenue generation for the british so uh, so the colonial purpose of uh, Uh, revenue generation and the colonial purpose of massive trade and transportation through the calcutta port it was finally getting affected due to the changes in flows of river so it became vital for the british or rather the british became anxious to uh, i mean towards this particular situation and uh, so they became very aware that something needs to be done you know at particular maybe at a particular point at a particular uh, junction a barrage or a dam needs to get constructed that would artificially control the flow of the bhagirathi hugli river because the flow of the bhagirathi hugli river was extremely important for reviving and restoring the health of the calcutta port so as early as 1853 the in the opinion of sir arthurton you know we find from colonial reports that arthurton said that uh, a barrage 
had to be needs to be constructed at that particular point. And uh, so, this particular opinion and this idea was also followed by um, several other uh, colonial officials like uh, Vernon Harcount, like Reek, and in the Stevenson Moore Committee report, it was emphasized that uh, the barrage really needs to get constructed. And we can also, all, all, I mean, we can see that you know the Stevenson Moore Committee report. Uh, it was published in 1916 and 1919. So by that time, uh, as time was passing, so the uh, so the health of the Calcutta port was, be, I mean, it was getting more uh, um, affected. So the the deterioration level was increasing because the uh, river, the distributary, was also deteriorating. So, uh, in the Stevenson Moore Committee report, we find that you know there was a whole lot of emphasis on the construction of the barrage, followed by you know, the, and we remember you know the great uh, debate uh, that took place in uh, 1930s, and we also had discussed about uh, William Wilcox's views um, and all that, and his particular idea about overflow irrigation. So, Wilcox also we find uh, from Wilcox lectures and Wilcox uh, uh, writings that Wilcox was also um, in support of the construction of the fort, uh, port, um, uh, sorry, construction of the uh, barrage to revive or re uh, resuscitate the uh, port. Uh, then T. M. O. A. Webster, everyone. So this entire period between 1853 and uh, 1946. So in the opinions uh, and in the committee reports um, during the colonial time, it was uh, highly emphasized that the barrage needs to get constructed. So finally. After independence in 1957, Walter, Dr. Walter Henson, he was uh, he came to India uh, from the United States as the main river expert, uh, as the technical expert, and he finally uh, remarked and he argued that the best uh, ever best technical solution to tackle uh, the condition of the uh, Cal Calcutta port could only be through the construction of a barrage at Farakka and this was absolutely clear by 1950s. So, it is a long period of time between 1853-50s, so 1850s and 1950s that finally determined and decided uh, the fate of the project. And it is very interesting to find out here that uh, Uh, you know, uh, an insight from the boundary commission. So, when I was consulting uh, various official documents uh, relating to this particular project, so I got a very interesting document uh, of 1978, a document from the Ministry of uh, you know Ministry of External Affairs. And in that document, uh, what I found was that uh, a particular decision by Cyril Ratcliffe and the Boundary Commission. So, we all know that India uh, to a great extent, I know the partition uh, to a great extent, it, uh, it, it was mainly done on the principle or on the religious uh, principle. So, the uh, contiguous Muslim majority uh, districts uh, would go to a state would go to pa uh, Pakistan. Uh, and uh, you know the the Hindu uh, contiguous Hindu majority districts would be there uh, in uh, Bengal, right? In uh, West Bengal. Now, what happened is that uh, Murshidabad it consisted of uh, Muslim majority, but as Farakka was so very important for the uh, for India, so uh, so what happened is that Murshidabad was not compromised or, or Murshidabad was not given to uh, Pakistan. Uh, or eastern Pakistan, uh, rather Murshidabad remained with us. On the other hand, a compensation was made by you know uh, when Khulna, which was not a uh, Muslim majority uh, district, but which was a Hindu majority district, Khulna was given uh, to Pakistan. So, these are some interesting uh, uh, things which show that you know um, though religious uh, principle was the uh, I mean deciding factor. Uh, 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 so far as partition was concerned, but on the other hand, geopolitical issues and issues like where particular barrage would be constructed and how that would determine the political and economic fate of a nation, that became more uh, deciding and that became a more dictating factor rather than the religious 
uh, variable in this particular context. Yeah. So, finally, is there a gap between the official projection and the actual reality? So, from 1850s to 1950s, we have seen that how most of the people, how the big shots, how the experts, they had really talked in favor of the construction of the bank. And the idea was that uh, it was uh, extremely important, it was vital to revive Kolkata port uh, through you know uh, revival of the river regime and navigability of Bhagirathi Hugli. But then is it a story of technical success? Let us forget about social and economic and environmental implications for the moment and let us only concentrate on the technical aspect for now. So, even if you only concentrate on the technical component for now and if I raise this particular question that is it a story of technical success, then also we will find unfortunately and I do not know whether it would be an exaggeration to say like this or not, but then I this is not my opinion, but I am uh, uh, you know sharing the opinion of the river experts people like uh, Kollan Rudro or people like P. K. Porua who had said that this project is actually a technical fiasco. Because we remember that why the feeder canal was constructed, the feeder canal was constructed in order to reduce the sedimentation load and in order to check sedimentation uh, in the estuary. But unfortunately, even today sedimentation in the estuary, sedimentation in the estuary continues unabated and the annual quantum of dredging it has increased from 6.40 uh, mm cube during pre Faraka days to 13.24 during Faraka days and further it has increased to 21.18 per annum between 1999 and 2003. So, there are detailed reports and uh, there are also updated reports uh, relating to the annual quantum of uh, dredging and it shows that siltation, sedimentation, these problems uh, which were supposed to uh, be met by the uh, cons I mean through the construction of the barrage along with uh, its uh, components like the feeder canal and all unfortunately had not been made. So, the geographers and the river experts they are not very uh, satisfied about the project and uh, you know um, so we do not get to hear much appreciation about the project and it is to a great extent considered as a technical failure. And when uh, uh, I mean uh, during those days during the 50s and 60s when uh, the idea was uh, you know in the air that this particular project will be uh, taken forward. Then eminent river experts like for example, Kapil Bhattacharya he totally he was totally against uh, this particular project, but very unfortunately he was you know declared as a spy of Pakistan and many other uh, you know derogatory things uh, were told and he was humiliated. But today we see that how the um, warnings that were generated by people like Kapil Bhattacharya and all how this uh, had you know uh, really got translated uh, into reality and how uh, Faraka had to a great extent the virus project to a great extent had not been able to uh, deliver what it had actually uh, promised you know so far as official reports are concerned. So, um, so these are the uh, references, uh, so you, you can also go through the official site and as I mentioned there are some studies from the Bangladesh perspective. So, uh, Mirza is one such authority on that, then uh, few works uh, by uh, I mean uh, I had also done a work on, um, on uh, Faraka, but mainly focusing on the chores and uh, the river and islands which I will be focusing in my next presentation and uh, I mean uh, I mean the details would be shared in a more elaborate way in the uh, following presentation. And uh, the book by uh, uh, R. K. Mukherjee, Changing Face of Bengal, a very important book which talks about how you know history and geography of Bengal actually started uh, getting altered 
since the 18th century due to changes in the courses of river. So, how changes in courses of river can actually determine uh, changes for particular uh, cities and you know districts and uh, particular geographical spaces. So, this is uh, where we really need to understand the relationship between rivers and society, the cyclical relationship between rivers and society. Uh, some few more uh, uh, um, references I mentioned about uh, Dr. Colin Rudro. So, Colin Rudro's work on Faraka barrage. So, Colin Rudro had actually counted uh, this uh, increase in the uh, dredging. So, as we are discussing about the annual quantum of dredging, how it has increased from this particular year to this particular year. So, all these had been calculated by uh, experts like Colin Rudro. And this very interesting uh, reference uh, that I talked about that talk gives us detail about the about the decision of the boundary uh, commission during uh, the partition of India. And so, this is the Ministry of External Affairs uh, primary document which was published in 1978. So, thank you and in the next presentation let us uh, discuss and let us focus on the social and environmental implications of the project. Thank you.